Hi everyone, my name is Timur. Uh, a few years ago I gave this talk uh, about all the different ways in which you can initialize a variable in C++, and there were lots of them. Uh, but that was before C++20, now we have C++20, so we have even more ways to initialize a variable. Uh, one of them is this weird thing which actually doesn't have a name in the standard. It's uh, this uh, um, new way of doing aggregate initialization by using parens, and the standard calls that direct initialization. So I'm going to call this direct aggregate initialization. It's not a term in the standard, but I think it makes sense because it's very confusing because it's not really more direct than the traditional aggregate initialization, but whatever. Uh, so what that means is now, if you have an aggregate, uh, for example, an array, you can not only initialize it with braces, but you can now also initialize this with parens, you know, like a constructor called that syntax. That's what we call direct initialization. So that works now since you're plus 20. Um, aggregates are, of course, not just arrays, but also aggregate uh, classes, like this one here. This is an aggregate class. You could, um, you know, always initialize this with braces. Um, and now you can also initialize it with parens. Right? This has no constructor. This is just aggregate initialization. That works since C++20. Well, um, why did we do this? I mean, uh, it's not to make uh, initialization even more confusing and even more weird, but actually there is a practical use case. What this allows is now we can have perfect forwarding for aggregates. Right? This was not possible before. So things like uh, 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 make shared or in place back, things like that. You can now use them with aggregates, which previously was not possible before because you can't do that with curlies, right? So that's great. This is kind of the biggest win of this feature. Uh, slightly uh, less important win, but kind of also falls out of that, is that you couldn't really use aggregate initialization inside a macro because if you have something like this and if you have like a paren, it's a macro, and then you have a curly, and then you have a comma then the parser is going to think that that's going to be the next macro argument and the parser just completely explodes and it's not going to parse your code just because of the way the preprocessor grammar works. Uh, but with parens, that's, that's okay. So, right? so that's great. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that initializing, initializing a variable with uh, parens and initializing a variable with curlies is not quite the same thing because it's a initialization, but it kind of looks like a function call, so we made them to be, behave a little bit more like function calls, right? So, for example, um, brace initialization with curlies does not allow narrowing conversions. Aggregate initialization with parens does. On the other hand, brace initialization allows uh, brace elision, right? So if you have like a nested uh, aggregate like here, uh, you can elide the braces, but with parens you cannot. Here's another, a little bit less common thing. Uh, Braces have this property that they actually extend the lifetime of a temporary, parents don't. So then you get a dangling reference here in this case. And, and here's my favorite one. This is actually really great. So here, what's going on here? We have an aggregate, and we have two elements, and the second one is uh, a class with an explicit constructor, okay? So now, uh, we, can, we can initialize this aggregate here by explicitly initializing both of the aggregate elements, that's all fine. If you use now parens, the new C++ 20 syntax, that's also fine. If you um, then omit the second argument, it becomes interesting. Now this doesn't compile. Why does it not compile? It does not compile because if you don't explicitly initialize the member of an aggregate, it's going to be implicitly initialized as if by copy list initialization from an empty brace init list. <laughs> and um, that is copy list initialization from base init list is copy initialization, which does not work with explicit constructors, right? So that's going to give you an error. Same thing with parens. But what happens if you then also omit the uh, first element? Turns out with braces, well, it still doesn't compile because you're still implicitly initializing the C and you can't do that because it has an explicit constructor and you can't copy list initialize that. But it turns out that if you use parens, it works. <laughs> Uh, why is that the case? Well, because that is actually not aggregate initialization at all. It's actually value initialization. Because that is something you could write since uh, C++ 98. And since C++ 03, actually, this would do zero initialization of the elements. So this is something that, you know, this syntax we always had, paren, paren, empty paren, paren, which had a different meaning. And this new feature where you can have paren with arguments inside, you know, it shouldn't be a breaking change, so obviously it shouldn't change the meaning of this. So this is still doing value initialization and not aggregate initialization, okay? So um, that's, that's very important 
Um, and yeah, this is all I wanted to say about aggregate direct aggregate visualization. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>